What's up everybody? It is Saturday, November 7th today. It's an absolutely gorgeous day. We've had awesome weather lately in the Chicagoland area. In today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about three easy steps you can take to get your lawn winterized, ready to go in the winter time, to help it avoid the stress of all that cold weather, make sure that it thrives once springtime starts again, and also to make sure that all of your equipment, your fertilizer, all the things that you use all year long, you've got a plan of what to do with all that stuff so you're not throwing money down the drain. So step number one in this process is gonna to be to apply a winterizer fertilizer. Now I've been doing this for a long period of time now. I started in September and I'm slowly, about every two weeks, I'm putting down about a quarter pound to a half pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet. If you're somebody who maybe hasn't fertilized in a long time, getting a winterizer fertilizer is a good idea for you. So there's a lot of different companies that make these things, but the ratio is almost always the same. And the ratio is 32-0-10, which means 32% nitrogen, 0% phosphorus, and 10% potassium. So that nitrogen is gonna help continuing that top growth of the plant. It's gonna help protect it during the winter time to where once the spring starts again, the plant's got plenty of energy to start growing and thriving and spreading. That phosphorus, I can't use any phosphorus because I live right next to the lake and it causes all kinds of algae problems. So I always go with products with 0% phosphorus. The potassium, which is 10% of that product that we just talked about, that also helps build up the root zone and the strength and the stress tolerance of the plant. Now, when you're putting down that fertilizer, you have to think about how much you are putting down. And one thing you don't wanna do is put too much down right now. One, because you could burn your lawn if you don't water that in. Any fertilizer with a high percentage of nitrogen needs to be watered in. You don't wanna just let it sit on your grass because it's gonna burn it and make it yellow. So putting down a rate that's about a half pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet, I'm gonna put a link in the description of an easy calculator to help you figure out your square footage, how much of the product you should put down to get that ratio. So again, put down a smaller amount because in November, the grass is not able to absorb all the nutrients the way it does during the summertime or during its peak growth period. So that's step number one, put down a winterizer fertilizer that's gonna help get your lawn through the winter time. And then once spring comes, it's gonna help wake it up if you're ready to rock and roll. Before you put your winterizer fertilizer down, it's important to look around your lawn. If you have tons of leaves, make sure you're not just broadcast spreading fertilizer over top of leaves because you're gonna be wasting money that way when you rake up leaves or when you mow them up. The mower is gonna suck up those leaves, but it's also gonna suck up that fertilizer, which is basically throwing money down the drain, and we don't wanna make that happen. So when you're doing this, before you put down your fertilizer, mow or rake or whatever it is you need to do to clear the grass, that way that fertilizer is going onto the grass and can be absorbed into the soil instead of being sucked up by the mower or being raked away. Step number two is probably the most important when it comes to saving you money. And that's figuring out what you're gonna do with all of your products, your seed, your fertilizer, and your equipment going into winter time. Because if you don't have a plan for that and you just kind of wing it and say, all right, I'm done for the year, you could have some major issues which could cost you a lot of money come spring. So talking about fertilizers, one thing you wanna do if you have a bag of fertilizer that you've not yet used and it's already open, making sure you seal that off because you don't want it absorbing moisture. It's gonna make that bunch up and it might make it difficult for you to use it come springtime. If you have liquid products, I've got a bunch of liquid products and I'm not gonna leave those in my garage because if I do and they're unopened, there's a chance that they're gonna freeze. The packaging, the plastic that it comes in could break and then I've lost my expensive fertilizer that I have. So what I recommend is putting those things in a bin. So get a big bin if you can, put those things all together and put them inside your house somewhere for the winter time. If you're thinking to yourself, well I don't have any room anywhere to do that. If you have a bin of something else that maybe you don't use very much that's already in the house, take that out put it in the garage because whatever's in there probably doesn't matter if it freezes or not, but what's in your garage, those chemicals, those different things you have, the mosquito sprays, all that different stuff, you don't wanna have that freeze over the winter time. So if you can put that in a bin, put it in your basement or put it in your storage area, it's gonna keep those things good because they're meant to be stored at room temperature, not in freezing cold temperatures. Also with your equipment, you have to think, what am I gonna do with my mower? with my sprayer. Your mower, make sure you're not leaving gas 
over the winter time because condensation can build up. You get water in your gas line. It causes all kinds of problems. You wanna be able to go in next spring, take one pole and get that thing fired up. So either buy a fuel stabilizer that's gonna stabilize that fuel and prevent water from building up within your fuel tank or completely run it dry. What I always do is I let my machines run until they're absolutely out of gas and that's what I do over the winter time. Please do not just leave them because if you do, there's a chance in the spring you're gonna have some major issues which is gonna cost you money. Also, to go along with winterizing your equipment, you gotta think about the outside of your house, things like your hoses. If you're a first time home buyer, make sure you disconnect your hoses from the spigot because if you leave that, that water is gonna freeze in the winter time, it's gonna expand, it can break the pipes on the outside or the inside of your house, which can cause major problems. Also, if you have something that you use to wind up your hose, disconnect the hose from where it attaches on the inside of here because a lot of times those things are made of plastic and if you just disconnect here and you don't do it out here, the water stays in the hose and again, it can freeze, it can expand, it's gonna break that weak plastic, which is gonna make this useless. So disconnect that on the inside as well. If you have an irrigation system, like an in-ground sprinkler system, also make sure that either you have somebody blow it out or you do it yourself if you have the equipment and the knowledge to do that. The last step, step number three, is something that not a lot of people do, but is something that can be very beneficial when it comes to keeping your grass nice throughout the winter time, and that's putting down a fungicide. And you might be thinking, why would I put down a fungicide? That's something you put down in like June and July to prevent things like brown patch and dollar spot. But in the winter time, you can get what's called snow mold. So when the snow sits on top of that grass for a long period of time, it can create a fungus which causes snow mold. And there's some different products that you can use that can help prevent that. Now, I've got a bunch of different products for this. And depending on your budget, you can choose whatever it is that you would like to use. One of them, probably on the lower end cost-wise, would be Scott's Disease X. You could put that down over your lawn. It's broadcast spread. It's a granular form. So you could put that down. And you want to put that down before you get your first snow. So right now in November, we're probably going to get snow here in a couple weeks, even though it's 75 degrees today. But putting that down now is going to be beneficial. You could also use a product with the active ingredient propiconazole. So something like you see right here, this has an active ingredient of propiconazole, and that's very effective at preventing fungus and things like snow mold. Also, when it comes to that, if you've used different preventative fungicides in the past, it's important that you switch them up. Just like when you go to the doctor, they're not gonna give you the same medication all the time because you adapt to that. Your body gets used to it and then it's not as effective. Fungicides and grass are the exact same way. Kind of weird, right? But there's different classes of fungicides. So if you order a fungicide, I've got two different ones that I'm showing you right here. They're different classes. So what I do, especially in the summertime to try to prevent fungus and even in the winter, is I use two applications. So I'll apply once, wait about three or four weeks, I'll apply again of this same class of fungicide. After that, I switch it up to a different class of fungicide because that way it's not gonna have that tolerance and it's not gonna build up that resistance to that fungicide. So that's a lot of information, it's a bit extra, I get it, but I'm a bit extra and that's why my lawn looks the way that it does. So if you don't wanna go above and beyond with that, it's not totally necessary to do this, but if you do put down a preventative measure like a fungicide, it's gonna help you prevent snow mold so that way when springtime comes and the grass starts to green up, you don't have these circular patches all over the place of fungus. Thanks so much for watching this video. I appreciate it. I hope you learned something new. Best of luck to you going into this winter time and to next spring, nothing but green grass and sunshine. See you next time.